What do you really want in a laptop? Let's not talk about gaming here. Let's talk about the average user, the student, the person who is a working adult. What do you really want? Lightning fast performance, a quality typing experience, a good looking display, great build quality, great battery life, great speakers. And apart from that, I wouldn't think a normal user would ask for much, much more. So the Acer Swift Tree, which is kind of advertised to that average consumer with its price range, can it do all that? Well, you gotta watch this review to find out because no spoilers. As always, we start off with the design. I mean, the Swift Tree is by no means a gorgeous laptop. It's not a supermodel among laptops. It's just kind of pretty. It's a far cry from the MacBooks and the razor blades of the world. It's not stunning, not eye-catching, not amazing, but it definitely looks really acceptable. There's nothing you can deem as an eyesore on this laptop. On most models, it's a simple, pretty aluminum shell, but uh, this one I have here is the special edition Swift Tree, which has a glass back, and it's pretty nice. And it's special edition because I'm cool. Now I'm just kidding, but this laptop is actually quite a looker. It's completely aluminium, like the others, but on the top, it's not covered in metal, but glass. I really, really like it. It looks super nice to me, and to, in my opinion, it's a lot more unique than the look that MacBooks and razor blades are going for. It's got nice proportions and angles and surfaces, all look kind of good. There's nothing truly out of place. And I realize I'm describing the laptop it looks like it's a car, which it isn't, but you get what I mean. iOS, it's pretty good. On the right, there is a USB 2.0 port, which is great for driverless support of USB devices, as well as a SD card reader, which is lovely. A, actually a godsend for me because I'm a video maker. There are some lights on the right that indicate power and charging, blue and orange respectively. And on the left, there is a charging port, which is kind of poorly placed in my opinion because it blocks off the other ports. A rather convenient HDMI port, which is actually surprisingly getting rarer with how many laptops are getting thinner nowadays. A USB Type-C port to USB 3.0 Type-A ports, one of which has a supercharge feature for charging your power bank or your smartphone even faster, and a headphone jack. It's something that not everybody thinks is important, but I, I definitely need a headphone jack on all my devices. Unfortunately, there's no Ethernet port and the charging port is not USB-C, which kind of sucks, but overall the I.O. is quite excellent. The laptop sports a decent 720p webcam on top of the matte 1080p IPS display, but I'll talk more about the performance of that display in a bit. The webcam is pretty acceptable. It's not amazing, but it sounds and looks relatively okay. But below the 1080p display, there's the kind of the only ugly thing on this laptop, the Acer logo. They definitely need a rebrand because it's so tacky and ugly and the font is disgusting. I hate the Acer logo, which is why I covered it up on my monitor, but now it's on my laptop and I have to stare at it every single day. I use it, which is intolerable. But below that Acer logo, there is this logo which I truly like. A nice Swift logo, it's kind of the model of the laptop, Acer Swift tree. And it's so nice because it looks like the word Porsche on the back of 911s or the word Carrera on the back of 911s. It looks super clean, super neat, and it's on the hinge, and it's just pretty and elegant and classic. I really like this logo, and I don't know why Acer couldn't just put the Swift logo as the main logo, because clearly it's an Acer logo, you have it plastered on the back. Why do you have to have your consumers look at their Acer branding every day they use it? Super annoying, super pointless, please make that Swift logo kind of the main logo because... Okay, enough about the design, let's talk about the build quality. As I said before, the whole thing is metal, which is lovely. There's glass on the back, which is lovely. And there's basically no flex anywhere, which is lovely. The hinge is great, almost easy enough to open with one figure, but I feel that hinges that are easy enough to open with one figure feel a bit tacky and feel a bit weak. 
so I don't really care for one finger open. It's still easy to open though, so I don't really care. And overall, I think this laptop is going to be able to withstand some abuse. I f although I fear this glass model's back being chipped rather easily because it's glass and it chips. Enough about external features. Let's talk about usability and performance. Inside there is a i7-8550U or a i5-8250U depending on your model. The i7 has hyper-threading but both of them are quad-core mobile processors which is brilliant, it's fast and lovely. 8 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, as well as a MX150 GPU. Now, obviously, the configuration will change depending on which laptop you get, but mine is this, which I'm really happy with. Now, performance is um, it's fast, it's smooth, it's snappy. I mean, these specs are really good for an Ultrabook. Having a quad-core processor in a thin and light laptop, well, what Intel defines as thin and light, it's just... It's, uh, it's, it's just refreshing. It's brilliant to have so much power in a compact platform because my last laptop, while being an Ultrabook, only had a quad-core with hyper-threading and it was not the best experience per se, especially since I am now used to using my Ryzen-powered computer, which is insanely quick. So that's great. Now, because of that quad-core processor, I can actually do video editing now on a laptop, which is truly impressive and just inspired. It's brilliant. I love doing it because that means I can do video editing on the go. And for me, it is so fun and so useful. So I love the performance of this thing. Now, it would be nice if I could have upgraded the RAM from 8 gigs to 16 gigs like by myself, but it's limited to 8 gigs across all models and it's sold it on the motherboard so you can actually upgrade it yourself, which is definitely annoying, but 8 gigs is kind of enough for basically anything. And RAM is quite expensive now, so maybe Acer just wanted to cheap out there. The MX150 is definitely um, good enough for gaming on this laptop. It's fine for doing some GPU acceleration as well, but I won't say push it too far, don't do any crazy 3D modeling, don't try to play PUBG 4K Ultra settings are on here because obviously that is never going to happen. The MX150 is one of the lowest end mobile GPUs in Nvidia's lineup and while it is no, not weak by any means, it's not going to be brilliant either. There's no point playing in 4K on this laptop either because the display is in 4K. It's 1080p. It's not the most groundbreaking thing, but it really is good. It's pleasant, it's enjoyable, it works as a display. Now, if you watch my review of a 1080p LCD monitor, you realize that, frankly, it's all you need unless you're doing crazy professional work. So the 1080p resolution isn't a big issue here. And the monitor is actually very enjoyable if you look past the standard resolution. It's got good contrast, very nice blacks, and it's not OLED, unfortunately, but OLED panels are hard to come by nowadays anyway. It's got good contrast. The saturation is not amazing, but it's definitely enough. It's not oversaturated, which is a good thing. The viewing angles are lovely. I can look at it from basically anywhere and it'll be fine. And overall, the 14-inch screen is just, it's good. It's, I can't complain about it, just like most things on this laptop. Kind of a theme going here. The keyboard is lovely. It's not as good as like the Razer Blade or the Dell XPS, but it is enjoyable to use. It's tactile, it's well built, there's no flex as I've said before. And yes, the keys are lacking just a little bit of travel, but I like the good feedback it provides. I don't like the layout though, as the power button is integrated into the keyboard, which I find ugly and also um, annoying because there have been countless times where I'm typing, reaching for delete or backspace and hitting the power button instead and causing something to happen which I do not want to happen. That's to say, I turn the laptop off by accident and I lose all the data I haven't saved. I hope this is not a trend that continues but I see a lot of laptop manufacturers putting a power button inside as part of the keyboard and I just, I just hate it, it's not, it's not nice. And um, I also prefer full-size arrow keys as well as home and end buttons on my keyboard. So I don't like having them all squished together the bottom right, which is just kind of frustrating. I don't really enjoy that because it makes it much harder to navigate through your document. 
And that's important. If you're a student trying to do work super, 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 super quick, you want to have all the keys ready and easily accessible and not mushed up together and hard to reach. The trackpad is also nice. I think it's glass. I'm not too sure about this, but it is, it feels solid and it uses Windows pre precision drivers. It tracks well, it's precise, it's accurate. You, there's no inconsistent acceleration. On this trackpad overall, it's pretty accurate and I can use it to edit videos, which is really, really good because um, the trackpad is also nice. I think it is glass, I'm not too sure, but it has Windows precision drivers, has great accurate responsive tracking. It's lovely, it works, I enjoy it and I actually can edit videos on it, which is super functional and that's great. Now, I wish it could be bigger, but I'm happy with its current size and because of Windows new you know, swipe features that are integrated with the trackpad and all the shortcuts, um, having a good trackpad is important on a laptop, in my opinion, even if you only use a mouse because you never know when you don't have a mouse. So uh, good to see a good trackpad here. Now on the right of the trackpad, there is a fingerprint reader, which is such a godsend. It's such a, it's such a luxury that that you wouldn't care about until you actually had it and you wouldn't want it to go. It's a feature that's basically been on smartphones since five, six years ago, and I'm glad to see it become more popular on a laptop, especially one that's made for the mainstream market like this one. The speakers too are so surprisingly awesome. They're clear, they're enjoyable, and they get really, really loud. They are, however, down firing, which is disappointing because if you put it on a slightly soft surface, the sound will be muddled. Um, and it's not just, it's just not consistent throughout anywhere you put it because of how physics works and how the sound will be reflected in different ways affecting the quality. So if the speakers could face upwards, which I think is entirely possible, um, that would be brilliant, Acer. Thanks. But apart from that, it's really good. It's, it's got a good bass, it's got good mids, it's got good treble. Um, it definitely is very nice. Now let's talk about battery life. It's respectable, but it's not amazing. It can last a good few hours while I script and listen to YouTube videos or music on Spotify in the background, but um, it's only a few hours and that's only at medium brightness. So if you are somewhere that needs a lot of screen brightness and you crank up that screen brightness, then your battery life will take a even bigger hit. Now it's definitely usable, but I recommend when you leave the house, bring the charger because you don't want it to die halfway through a lecture. And because it's not a USB type C, non-proprietary type of cable, this laptop, you're, you're, the chances that someone else has the same charger is super freaking low. But still, the charger is not the best option because it's not super compact, it's not like a simple USB Type-C cable, it's still a power brick, it's still rather bulky and it's going to take up some space inside your backpack. Now, the laptop seems pretty good overall, but um, it does have one pretty annoying issue, bloatware. It's so frustrating and I mean it's cluttered with all the unnecessary Acer software and third-party apps that are just basically completely useless and I wish Acer would just make do, just get rid of it because it's kind of frustrating that I have to spend the first 30 minutes using this laptop removing all the bloatware that Acer freaking installed on it. It's frustrating. But the thing is, apart from that, I really cannot fault this laptop. This laptop is truly good. It's actually really, really good. It's an all-round performer. It does its job super, super well. I can't fault it. It looks good. It's built well. It's got good I.O. The screen is good. The keyboard's good. The mouse is good. It's not exemplary in like anything. It's not super amazing in any aspect of things, but it is a good laptop. And if you're an average student, a working adult, looking for a laptop, I would wholeheartedly recommend getting the Acer Swift 3, especially over say the Lenovo 720S, if I'm not wrong, or the 530S from Lenovo, or the Asus line of laptops. Because right now, at its price, I think it's probably the best. But of course, if you can find the other laptops cheaper, it's 
this is so for the price that it's going for I would say it gets my solid recommendation it's definitely a solid one good on you Acer this is much better than the Acer Aspire V7 I bought four or five years ago good to see that you're improving your laptops because this one's bloody awesome anyway this has been a pretty long review and I think I've put the most effort into this video like ever hope you guys enjoyed it if you did definitely like and subscribe um, you can buy this on Amazon by the way linked down below using my affiliate link and uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to thanks for watching Goodbye.